arrested and you were in jail the night that the bombing took place. Yes. So how did you hear about the bombing of the motel? Well, we were in city jail over on 6th Avenue South at the time that the uh, gas motel was bombed. But they were trying to, to uh, find Dr. King's room, which I'm sure was made obvious by whomever was giving them the information to know where to put that place that bomb. Well, we felt the vibration in city jail on the south side. It was a big explosion. Everybody got upset because they say they bombed something, they bombed something. And uh, we began to lift people up on our shoulder where they could, because the windows was high above us, and they could see the flames coming from there, but we didn't know what it was at the time. But they knew something had been bombed, and we just saw flames from it. But it was a gas and motel, not the restaurant, per se. It was, it was connected, but it was just trying to get Dr. King's room. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've seen a few photographs of the night of the bombing, and there were a lot of people in the streets mm -hmm. and near the motel and all. Did, have you ever talked to anybody who witnessed uh, the, the, the aftermath of the bombing? I really have not met anybody who would, would know anything about the gas and motel. Uh, that was... Well, you were talking about the best kept secret. In a way, it, it had to have been a secret because there was very little said about it. It was just a decent place that we could go to, and everybody that attended uh, there was not civil rights people. It was open to the public. But uh, it was something new for us, but I don't know what it offered because, as I said, we would go by there after we were released from jail, and, but we didn't stay, so I don't know all the ins and outs. Mm. But I know it was well thought of. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, I'm, I'm assuming that after the bombing, the, the, the motel must have been closed for a period. Uh, do you know uh, if it was temporarily closed after that happened? Uh, it was temporarily closed. Cause I was in jail. I, one of my... Um, I was in jail on April 11th, the day that Dr. King was arrested when he started a letter from Birmingham jail. Well, we were in jail at the same time. We were in different parts because they had him uh, separate, naturally, from us. But um, I don't um, recall. I'm sorry, I'm taking up. I'm holding you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, um, I don't recall. Um, I don't recall us going to the motel for anything. I don't record, uh, recall anything about the gas motel as far as that's concerned, but I do know that the time period was when I was in jail. But I was in jail twice. And see, uh, they ran, that's when they ran out of money, and they couldn't get us out. And we were sent back to jail because we couldn't pay the bail. And that's when Harry Belafonte and uh, Sam and Dave Jr. all of them got together and gave a concert to get us out, but they had. The, but that was about the size of it. And if it was, usually it was before day in the morning on purpose to let us out because we were told that the Klansmen were outside waiting on us. So when they let us out on Sixth Avenue South. It was a dark area, and uh, and then there was a overpass, a tunnel back that you had to go through to get up near New Pilgrim Baptist Church. So we were kind of in a, in a dilemma. But uh, Dr. King used to say, remember, Uncle Tom and Aunt James are still being born. And sure enough, whereas we had people who would, our people who would go and tell the whites what was going on with our movement, that was the whites who were sympathetic and would come and let blacks know what was going on. And that's how it was found out that they were going to release us before day in the morning and the Ku Klux Klan would be waiting for us. So the word got out to got out to the Reverend Shellers and Dr. King and all they had people out there waiting for us, parked cars waiting for us. I'll never forget that. Mm -hmm. Well, um, how would you how would you characterize the we, we know that the motel was a successful business, it was well run, had a very good reputation and uh, had, a, had a really exceptional uh, uh, employee base. Uh, how would you characterize the, the social importance of the Gaston Motel to the black community? I think the Gaston Motel 
made a big difference in the lives of blacks because blacks found out that they can eat in an elaborate place. They could go sit and didn't have to worry about uh, something happening to them or any danger. They could meet and greet and there was a lot of laughter, a lot of fun and people coming in contact with each other they hadn't seen in a long time. And uh, it was like almost like, I call it fellowship. And that, a lot of that was done there because some people, I guess, who was used to coming back, maybe, and then the others would come in and see them, and they would go straight over to them, shake hands or hug or whatever, before they even before they even seated them, because they were just so glad to be in a place like that. Beautiful place. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, what we're going to do next week is uh, we're going to bring a number of people together who are going to kind of brainstorm on what can happen with the Gadsden uh, property. Um, if you had a wish to make, what would you want to see happen to the Gaston to bring it back to be a, a usable site? I would like for the AG Gaston Motel to, to symbolize what it stood for. Unbeknownst to themselves, as my grandmother, I like to use her expression, we have fun doing that. Mm -hmm. Because the work that was done, uh, the meetings and the press conference thing that was held in there, uh, on that site was so significant until I would like to see it uh, as a memory thing. I would like to see, I would like to see the organizations that was involved, like the NAACP, of which I am first vice president of the Birmingham branch. I would like to see SCLC to have a place there. I would like for uh, other organizations that are still surviving now that had input in the uh, movement. I would love to see something in favor of Reverend Shellsworth, who does not get his just. And I always say a uh, proper is, is, is never recognized in his own country and never be a perfect example of Reverend Shellsworth. I would like for him to be highlighted in some way. If you have to have a Shellsworth room, or a Shell, uh, what, I have memorabilia in there. But I, but I would love to see something that is I say, significant to our people because that was our place and I want it to be about us and our accomplishments and, and, and how we've come this far. We cannot understand how we, uh, where we are if we didn't understand what happened before we got to where we are. So I'm, I'm very, very hopeful that the place, it doesn't necessarily have to be a motel again. There, and if so, maybe it will be uh, special or something, but I would love to see it housing different organizations that can keep our heritage forever before you before it changed because if we want to be honest the powers that be are rewriting history as we speak so I don't want it rewritten I want it to be a permanent reminder and I would love to see that done well on that note I think we we'll end right here Ms. Oh. Jackson so <laughs> Thank you very much you. for talking to us about the Gats and Motel and sharing your memories with us. Well, I appreciate that. Okay, I appreciate great. that a lot. Okay, then. Mm -hmm.